All right, here we go. Aubrey heads into the elevator and goes straight down to the 30th floor, uh, whereupon she, uh, whereupon faced with the reality of the situation on the 31st floor, she is filled with determination and a burning desire to murder all of Golem society. She's going to find out who leads the golems. She's going to find out um, what their like favorite foods and pastimes are, and she's going to infiltrate golem society and disguise herself as one of them. And then she's going to um, hit them where it hurts, and by that she means that she's going to um, she's going to she's going to pervert and ultimately um, sully and just corrupt and dis and destroy um, their favorite things. Ah, shit. She's attacked on all sides by bats, and so she's forced to run away and come back. So, she heads straight back to level 30 and uh, goes back into the mines. Fantastic. Hopefully, she she hopes, there will no longer be any um, attacks by bats, because bat attacks are just the worst. Um, and she's she's attacked by bats! She's attacked by bats. Once again, bats come from, from behind, and they attack her quite rudely. Get over here, bat. Fuck off. Um... She's she's faced with a golem who is very rude and who keeps sneaking up on her. So she corners the golem in a corner and beats his ugly face in multiple times until he finally um, falls down dead on the ground. At which point, she's attacked by yet another bat. I thought I told you, she screams, not to fuck with me bats. I hate you. And she kills the bat and takes its wing and uh, believes that with having done this she has sent a message to all of bat society. All of bat kind. Uh, with a single swipe, with a single swish of her sword, she kills a flying beetle and generates a staircase that goes straight down to the next floor. And holy shit, right in front of her very eyes, there's just another staircase that all automatically leads down to the next area. And she very happily goes straight down to the next level. Fantastic. Oh, look. It's another one of these horrible golem monsters, she thinks. Oh, look at me. I'm a golem monster. I'm scary. I make horrible, um, I make horrible noises, and I only take one point of damage because I have so much damage resistance. I have so much armor. Look at me. I am just completely uh, scary. Aren't you scared of me? She's she's sort of mocking the um, she she Aubrey Aubrey is so annoyed by the presence of these golems at this point and how scary they're trying to be that um, she goes out of her way to mock them anytime she sees them. She thinks that this has a, du a dual a dual function. She believes that not only does it help her not be scared of them, uh, it also helps them to feel a little bit less certain about themselves. Uh, because she wants to overthrow all of Golem society, and in order to do this, she figures that it will eventually be necessary to bring them to their knees psychologically, and this will necessitate breaking them as a people. So, if she can remove their sense of self-worth, uh, which seems to be rooted in their ability to scare people, then she figures she will be able to defeat them permanently. And frankly, she's really excited about that. She's really excited about the idea of completely uh, eradicating Golem society. Excellent. So, she continues on. She, she breaks rocks. She um, navigates through the darkness. She fights bats. She fights the golems and ultimately um, proves herself continuously. Aubrey is such a good adventurer now that um, she basically everything that she does is proof that, that she is the greatest adventurer of all time. 
every single step that she takes, deftly avoiding razor sharp stalagmites on the ground, or like just navigating through basic areas, um, is evidence of her proficiency. And um, the way that she, the way that she sort of brings a torch with her to illuminate areas, um, is, is also like an advanced technique that she invented herself. And she's very, very happy. She's very proud of herself in general. Excellent. So she continues on. She looks, uh, she looks at a at a horrible golem who appears to. Um, not have gotten the memo yet. The memo being that you you assholes are no longer scary. You're not scary at all. In fact, you never were. Um, and so he still thinks that he's scary, and so he's trying to get the jump on Aubrey. But little does he know, his strategy is not going to work ever, basically. And so before he has an opportunity to learn just how wrong he is, um, he's slain very unceremoniously by Aubrey, and ultimately pays the ultimate price, um, i.e. his life. Fantastic. <coughs> Aubrey is very excited to, um, to have this new piece of, like, to have this new piece of, um, motivation. She wants to think of the golems as being like criminals that must pay the ultimate price, and that that ultimate price is their lives, or their life. So, she um, she goes through level twenty, level thirty six. That is, um, with a bit of a smile on her face. She's sort of like she's turning it into a bit of a joke for herself, and um, she likes to joke that these golems are are like under her jurisdiction and that they're like criminals and that she gets to judge them and uh, force them to, to to atone for their crimes. She gets a lot of pl pleasure out of that. And um, not just pleasure, she thinks it's pretty funny actually. And so she continues on, she explores these mines and hopes at this point, she hopes to run into them um, so that she can have a little laugh to herself. But still she hates bats because there's nothing funny or interesting about bats. They're just assholes. They just fly around all over the place. They're no better than bees, frankly. And um, she just she's really annoyed by the fact that they can phase through walls, it seems. And how it, when she hits them with her sword, they don't actually... Like, they, they fly back. There's a lot of knockback when she hits them with her sword. And uh, she's a little bit annoyed every time she hits one with her sword. And it flies, like through a wall, phases into the wall, and then disappears for a few seconds while it, like, recalculates its trajectory and, like, opens its flight computer and, like, um, does a whole, whole like, series of simulations, combat simulations, and then finally, only after, like, a few hours does it eventually return to attack her a second time. And during all this time, while it's doing its stupid calculations, Aubrey just has to stand there and wait for it to for it to make its way over, which takes um, a lot of time away from her, uh, which otherwise would have been spent um, advancing. So, Aubrey, um, Aubrey really wishes that she could just um, that she could just kill the bats instantly, but unfortunately, they just they have so much health that um, they're forced, she's, she's forced to allow them to exist um, while they do all of their stupid calculations. Fantastic. Aubrey's, Aubrey's not happy about it, but whatever. She can hear the pitter-patter of golems in the distance. Um, actually, it's not golems, it's the pitter-patter, not of golem feet, but of bat wings. And so, ain't nobody got time for that. So deftly, without even really seeing where she's going, she clicks expertly on the um, on the the staircase that goes down to the 39th level. And holy crap, she's looking now, and she can see something on the ground. What is this? What is this? She wonders. Oh, it's amethyst. Oh fuck yeah! Mm -hmm. That'll make an excellent present. I'm glad. She goes on that I found this because at some point I'm gonna need to give 
um, Abigail a present on her birthday, and she goes on, if I can give her a amethyst on her birthday, so much the better, because I already know that she loves amethysts. Um, perhaps because they're the same color as her hair, um, but all, also maybe for other reasons. What the fuck is this? She wonders. Why can't I hit? Oh no, I can. For a second it looked as though Aubrey was unable to hit this golem, but it was actually just a trick of uh, uh, a trick of the light or something like that. And it turned out that after all that time, it was not actually um, impossible to hit that. It was not actually a problem at all to hit that um, golem. And ultimately, Aubrey forced it to pay the ultimate price with its of, it, of its life, and it died. Fantastic. Aubrey, uh, Aubrey was getting a bit tired. No, at this point, she had done a lot of exploring already, and uh, was not looking forward to having to tango with this bat, who was annoyingly flying around in circles. And um, Aubrey killed the bat, and it dropped an entire bomb—not a cherry bomb, but a bigger bomb. And Aubrey, Aubrey stared. Aubrey stares into the bomb, and she wonders, "Hmm." It generates an explosion. Watch out, she reads. There's like a little warning on the side. It looks like it was made by some sort of company that specializes in, in not getting sued. And so written on the side of it, on a little label, it says, Generates an explosion. Watch out. And she reads that and she just chuckles to herself a little bit, like, What? Why is this important? And she reaches level 40, opens a chest, and finds that she has received a slingshot. Ooh which requires stones for ammo. Fascinating, she she thinks. Uh, but I don't have time to try it out. Yes, I do. What am I talking about? It's really late at night, um, but, and Aubrey is worried that she, if she's not careful, she's gonna... Uh, she's gonna get trapped down here and pass out due to exhaustion. But uh, she goes down to level 41 just to see what it's like, and finds, holy crap, this place is like made of ice. It's very exciting. It's new. There are light blue slimes now. These are like ice slimes. Fantastic. Yet another slime that I can murder horribly. Fantastic. She's very excited. And so she quickly leaves and attempts to sprint all the way home despite the fact that it is past midnight and she's exhausted. Um, so she tries very hard to sprint all the way home, though she does get tr stuck a little bit on the landscape, as she does not exactly know how to get back in the dark yet. However, this is not the first time that she has attempted to sprint back home this late at night, so she's pretty confident that she'll be able to make it work. Um, though she can't get out of her mind the image of this of the um, ice slimes they were kind of beautiful actually and she sort of she can't believe what she's thinking she can't believe that she thought a slime was beautiful but she's thinking about it and yeah it actually kind of was um, so so maybe she'll have to reevaluate some things maybe she'll have to think a little bit more deeply about some things um, but ultimately she has realized that uh, ultimately she has realized that things are not as she thought and that she has a, a, a long way to go. So she goes to sleep for the night and she dreams about mining. Ooh, she realizes that she can make uh, she realizes that she can make a miner's treat which is like a, a lollipop. It's like a really colorful spirally lollipop. She has a dream it's like she's in Candyland, and she's running around, and there are like candy trees. the f The ground is cotton candy. The clouds are cotton candy. The trees are like popsicles, and like the lakes are maple syrup. And in front of her very eyes, she can see a miner's treat, which is a big spiral lollipop, um, just floating towards her. And she looks at the at the lollipop, and she realizes, "Holy shit! I know how to make that." And then, in her mind, suddenly, she completely understands how to make a miner's t a miner's treat. Perfect. She she wakes up, <coughs> and it is summer. So she goes over and 
immediately watches television like a massive introvert. Uh, and the, the fortune teller lady tells her that luck is not on her side. And Aubrey, is, Aubrey hears this information and is um, she's not happy. She, she did not want to hear that luck was not on her side. But what's she going to do, right? She can't actually do anything about it. So she is forced to just live with it and deal with it and um, put up with it in general. Fantastic. Okay. Let's put away this stuff. Let's put away these bat wings. This wood, uh, she thinks. And let us take these mixed seeds now that it is summer. Oh, and also these melon seeds now that it is summer. And let us, she goes on, take out the watering can as well and plant some of these seeds. Fuck yes. So she goes into her garden plot, which seems to have acquired some uh, problems in the time that she's been away. There is now a log. There, there was a rock and a big stick just in her garden. She's not sure how this happened. She's kind of angry that it did, but it doesn't matter because what she can do is just go in there and take care of it by chopping the fuck out of that log. And as she chops the log, it flies up into the air and directly into her hands, and she knows in that moment that things are going to be okay. So, systematically, she hoes out nine squares and then plants down... Oh, wait. She remembers that she needs fertilizer. She stops what she's doing. She, she avoids accidentally planting melons where there's no fertilizer. And she goes into her blue chest and finds 30 saps, which she can be turned into 15 fertilizers. So that's exactly what she does. She makes 15 fertilizers, 15 entire fertilizers. She heaves them over her head and just dumps them on the ground. Dumps them all over the ground. Fucking awesome. And then she plants each and every single one of these melon seeds in a perfect row, which is um, the perfect length to um, the perfect length to um, to lie along one exact side of her garden plot. Perfect. She then digs a couple of squares on the side and plants down some mixed seeds. Perfect and decides to call that good for the start of summer. She doesn't have any more seeds. Actually, actually she wants to make sure that that's the case. She looks into her chests, sees no more seeds. Okay, good. Uh, she takes the geodes with the intent to give them to Clint to break open. And she looks into her red chest and sees no seeds here either, except for the ones that have to wait. Perfect. Okay. She's hit with a, a sudden realization, which is that she can hear flies buzzing in the distance, and she really hates flies. She really does not want to have to face flies. <sighs> this is her least favorite part about um, about the summer. The flies. Oh well. Oh well. So, <clears throat> she sets out um, with the intention of giving everyone a gift that they like on the first day of summer. Oh, actually, a good first thing to do here would be to run straight to Pierre's, she realizes. Uh, get a little bit distracted along the way to see if I, Aubrey, can pick up any summer foraging plants, which I cannot, she concludes, and then head straight to Pierre's to look at the calendar and see whose birthdays are when, because that is very useful information. She ruffles a bush, wondering if the pink items are berries or not, and they are not berries. They're not berries at all. She looks at the calendar. Um, Maru's birthday is coming up. And that's the only one that she cares about. Uh, 
except except maybe Gus. Seeing that Gus's birthday is coming up, um, Aubrey comes up with a bit of a sinister plan and plans to to do something quite interesting for Gus's birthday. Perfect. Hello, Abigail. Here. Take this crystal. I found it in the mines last night as I was systematically undermining the entire golem uh, civilization. Hey, how do you know I was hungry? This looks delicious, she says. You are welcome, Abigail. Summer's here. It's not really my favorite season, she says. The air is so mucky. I feel like I'm floating in soup, she says. Yeah, I don't really like it that much either, Abigail. I prefer the winter and fall. Here's Caroline. On Wednesdays, the shop is closed, she says. Keep that in mind if you're going to need anything, she says. Yeah, I also noticed that I can't get into your house to talk to you people when when the shop is closed. Is that intentional? Is that like your is it like a prayer day or something? Uh, Aubrey wonders. So she goes and talks to Pierre, and uh, she really needs seeds. So she takes four blueberry seeds, um, two pepper seeds. Um, a corn seed. Oh, definitely two poppy seeds. <clears throat> Aubrey is certain that Penny likes poppies because she has heard, she's heard things, she's heard rumors. She gets wind of things that happen around town. And when she gets wind of them, she remembers them. And one thing that she remembers is that Penny likes poppies. So, she buys some poppy seeds specifically for Penny. She's planning to, to plant these poppies as soon as is physically possible, so that she can get a stockpile of poppies for Penny. Excellent. And, um, Aubrey walks over to Clint's house, and walks right up to him, and says, You know what? I've got some... I've got some... Oh, shit! Hey... Hey Clint, do you want to process these geodes for me for free? Do you? Do you? No? Okay, your loss, Aubrey says. Turns out that Aubrey was Aubrey is so poor right now that she cannot even afford to have Clint, who is her friend, process her geodes for her because it costs 25 gold apiece. A pittance, to be sure. And yet, Aubrey cannot afford it. So, she goes walking around on the beach uh, in an attempt to pick up valuable looking shells that she can sell to Lewis in her vampire box. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Aubrey... Aubrey wonders how she got in this situation. How, she begins, did I get so fucking broke? Why don't I have any money? I didn't buy that many seeds, she goes on. I brought, what? Eight, nine? Nine seeds? Total? Nothing. It's nothing. Um, so... Realizing this, she realized, oh, well, I, did, I actually do have two entire chests full of junk that I haven't been using, which I could probably sell almost all of. And on her way back to her farm, she ran into Jazz, which whom she gave, gave a daffodil. I love presents, thank you, she says. Oh, you're welcome, Jazz. Oh, are you looking for Aunt Marnie, she asks. I wasn't, Jazz, uh, but now that she's here, I'm going to give her this daffodil. Thank you, this looks nice, she says. You're welcome, Moni. Uh, you were not my primary target, but it doesn't really matter. I don't really care all that much. Ooh, she she peers into her memories. She attempts to real to, she attempts to determine how much her friends like her, and she realizes that Abigail um, currently probably likes her two out of ten possible hearts, which means there may be some sort of um, event the event some sort of bonding experience that they will share together 
Um, so, so Aubrey is 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 on the lookout for that. Perfect. And as she heads up to her to her house, she decides that it is time to sell everything, but not before she plants all of these seeds, because that is the more important task. So, she moves the seeds up onto her bar, and then moves straight into her garden plot, and begins digging, uh, begins tilling the soil. Four, four, um, four spots, four fertilizers, four blueberries. Fucking fantastic. Um, let's water the blueberries, shall we? She says. She sort of looks over at the scarecrow and thinks, you know, this is a nice looking scarecrow. Maybe I could, maybe I could talk to the scarecrow. Uh, I'm sure that it won't be considered strange for me at all to be friends with the scarecrow. After all, it's my scarecrow. And no one by, by God, no one is going to judge me for being friends with my Scarecrow. So, that's what I'm going to do, she says. Hey, Scarecrow. Um, what's your name? Let's call you... Let's call you... Um... Oz? Let's call you Oz. Hey, Oz. You're a Scarecrow. What do you think? Should we allow birds into our garden plot? Because I know, she continues, that I told the birds that they were welcome in my on my property, but now that I mention it, I'm pretty sure that that would be a bad idea if that means allowing them into my garden, where they can just eat all of my hard-planted, hard-earned um, crops. What do you think, Oz? And she sort of stares at, at Oz. And Oz says nothing. Oz does nothing because he's a scarecrow. And upon seeing this reaction from Oz, Aubrey looks down and with 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 a knowing expression um, accepts his his lack of response because she has not yet sort of come to terms with the with any lingering thoughts about her insanity. She long ago dispelled those thoughts and has not since considered them. So, because of this, she's in great danger of relapsing and um, go getting into a situation where um, where she turns crazy without realizing what's going on because she was not aware of it while it was happening. And this sucks, but it's a real danger that Aubrey is not paying attention to. So. Um, while while she completely ignores her mental health, she looks through her chests for items to sell to Lewis. Um, and he decides to sell like half of everything that she has. Almost all, almost all of everything that she has. So. She puts in the chest seven leeks, um, a silver leek, a silver red mushroom, a silver spring onion, 45 bug meats, five bat wings, um, five potatoes, a silver chub, and a bomb, and a cherry bomb, and three cauliflowers. Holy crap. Holy crap, Aubrey thinks. I did not realize that I had that many things on my uh, on my property that were valuable. I did not realize that I was hoarding that much wealth. So um, I'm glad that I, I decided to throw some of this stuff into the chest for Vam Vampire Lewis to sell. Um, fantastic. Wait a second. There's a cherry bomb. Uh, she takes the cherry bomb, in intending to sell it. And um, also takes some sneakers, which are probably worthless. And puts away the rusty sword because it can't be sold. Oh shit, she can't sell the sneakers either. She sells the cherry bomb, she sells the green algae, um, and calls it good. Um. 
she puts away the other stuff, but keeps the other uh, the items in her inventory that look like gifts because she does not want to lose them forever and ever. Excellent. Okay, whose birthday was coming up? Uh, Maru's. So Maru needs to receive a cauliflower on her birthday. Aubrey thinks. Oh yes, um, the wizard. Let's go and... Um, mm, actually, you know what? It's late. It's 5 p.m. She goes on. I'm just going to sit on my property and fish for the time being. And then tomorrow, I will go and do other things that are a better use of my time. Fantastic. So, Aubrey stands on her path that she built. Um, the same path that she built when she was having her um, her uncontrollable bout of aggression toward that woodpecker and its cousins. And uh, at this point, it's so far in the past that Aubrey is not even worried about it any longer. Uh, so she just focuses on catching this fish, which is a bit of a bastard and uh, very difficult to catch. Fuck off, fish. Why do you get to move faster than my bobber moves? She wonders. As the fish escapes and, uh, and it is completely way better at fishing, at, way, way better at swimming than Aubrey is at fishing. And she just pulls out a whole bunch of trash that she is disgusted by, and for some reason it goes into her pockets. She doesn't even think about it. As soon as she pulls out this CD from the river, she just throws it directly into her pockets. Fuck off. Oops. She casts her rod in again, uh, hoping to not encounter another one of those very difficult fish, because they are a nightmare. Oh, and she got another Joja Cola. Fantastic. No, stop it. Let's throw away this trash. Let's throw away this broken CD. And try again. Aubrey looked deep into the water, attempting to divine the location of a fish to catch, um, but ultimately saw nothing. It seemed that the majority of the things that lived in this pond, this stream, creek, were like algae and glasses and CDs, things that aren't alive. Um, and that doesn't really even strike her as paradoxical, because she was the one who said it. And Aubrey is the kind of person who will say things that don't make sense and not question them because purely for no other reason than the fact that she was the one who said them. Fantastic. She encounters a fish that is mildly determined to survive. It might be like the same kind of fish as she was catching before, but like a bit tired, a bit tuckered out as it was already nighttime. But ultimately, she catches it, and it was, it's a chub. Fantastic. Okay. Um, she continues to fish, uh, and then suddenly, at exactly 8 p.m., she starts to hear crickets and other nighttime creatures in the distance. She encounters probably another one of the same kinds of very difficult to catch fish. She goes into full concentration mode as she attempts to catch the fish. It's not looking good. Fuck off! Stop changing directions so quickly. I can't change the, the direction of the bobber that quickly. It's actually impossible. Aubrey gets a little bit upset because she keeps catching these fish that are just way more skilled than she is and isn't really sure why this has to be the case. And um, she just hopes that in the future she will no longer have to catch fish that are this difficult to catch because it, it, it looks as though there's not actually any technique that could be good enough to guarantee that she catches them. <sighs> if only, she wonders, there was some way for me to improve my fishing skill in such a way that 
would allow me to catch these fish, she wonders. And she she has a bit of a daydream about fishing, a daydream about better kinds of fishing poles, better kinds of bait, um, all kinds of stuff that would make her fishing experience more fun. Uh, and as she's doing this daydreaming, she realizes that she's actually really tired. Heaving this fishing pole over her head repeatedly has just yielded nothing but tired arms and a whole lot of trash in her pockets. Once again, she was not sure why she was just shoving the trash directly into her pockets. She should really have been throwing it away instantly. But as it stands, um, she, she for some reason just kept doing it. Okay. She puts the items away back in the chest and goes to bed. Aubrey will uh, investigate more summary things in the morning. In the night, Lewis comes by her house and picks up just a whole fuck ton of stuff. The five potatoes she sold sold for 400 gold. The three cauliflowers were 525. The stuff that she just found lying around sold for a whole ton as well. And it turns out that in the night, Lewis was able to take all these items to his bizarre underground vampire trading ring and uh, sell them all for like 4,000 gold. But then he went painstakingly and talked to every merchant in Pelican Town and found out that they would have given him 2,650 golds. So that's exactly how much he actually gave to Aubrey in her mailbox. Fucking beautiful. Lewis, what a scoundrel. What a bastard.